Hi, I'm Shannon Miller with the Miller Elder Law Firm. And I'm here with Jenna Fasulo. And we've been talking a little bit about um, the new law that just became effective on July 1st of 2020 related to vulnerable investors and security dealers. And while we were chatting, we thought, you know, this would make a really good educational moment for you guys, um, you know, about the new law. So Jenna, maybe, you know, you can ask your question again and we can kind of talk about the answer with, with our, our viewers out there. So what, what is this new law? So I understand that it went into effect on the 1st of July. What, what does it do for us? What the new law does is it allows security dealers, which would include like a financial advisor, um, banking institutions, anyone who might be managing money, um, to actually push a pause button on an individual transaction. So, for example, if I was going to send $100,000 to a lottery in Africa, um, I might... Um, you know, have that transaction go through my financial advisor and my financial advisor might see the transaction and say like, oh, this looks like a scam. Um, and before July, they were really powerless to do anything to stop that transaction from going through. Now, security dealers can actually push the pause button on a transaction where they have a, a belief that this in fact is an exploitation event or a scam. Um, now, there's certain yeah. And who does the law protect? So the law applies to anyone 65 years and older. Um, so without, you know, you don't have to be vulnerable. It just, that's one of the criteria um, for the pause. And then also if in fact you're a vulnerable adult. So if you're younger than 65, but you have some disability um, under, there's actually a statute that defines what vulnerable adult is. And it basically means you can't do your activities of daily living because you have a disability of some kind. So, you know, that might be infirmities of aging. It might be um, that you have a physical disability, like you're deaf or blind, um, or you have some other, you know, difficult situation in your life where, you, where it's affecting your activities of daily living. So it sounds like it can be a tool actually to prevent the exploitation from ever occurring. Right. So one of the problems that we often see in these cases um, is that once the money is gone, it's gone for good. And I think that's been the frustration of security dealers for a long time. This legislation has been pending for a long time. Um, and so, you know, it took a long time to get it to the point where it became really, I think, in its, in its really good format like it is now. So for example, um, there is a, a, a law now, a federal law that requires security dealers to contact their client and say like, look, do you want a trusted contact named on your account? This might be a, an agent under power of attorney or some other third party who the person who's the account owner trusts. And so when that freeze button, that pause button is put in place, there's also this requirement that that security dealer also contacts the owner of the account and that trusted contact, this freeze can only last for 15 days. Now it can be extended for an additional 10 days, but what we know as elder law practitioners is that during this time, we can start the process of doing an exploitation injunction that would create another freeze to prevent those assets from you know, getting to that um, you know, foreign soil. Um, so this is really just like a pause button to potentially get us into the exploitation injunction filing that we might want to put in, in play in the court system. And that may even create like a permanent or a final judgment situation where we might be able to then return those assets to the person who's either been exploited or scammed. So this is like another great tool when we couple it with now the current um, criminal laws on exploitation, and then that exploitation injunction that you and I have, even in the short time you've been with our firm, you're getting really familiar with this idea of this exploitation injunction, which is very um, helpful, in, again, in stopping that money from, from disappearing forever. So it's really great. It's just another tool that we have available to us 
The Office of Financial Regulation also has to be notified when one of these um, pauses or asset, you know, transaction freezes goes into effect. Um, and I think it's just another tool that we have in Florida to stop exploitation against our most vulnerable citizens. That's really and, awesome. Yeah, so anyway, that's a great little summary. I hope everybody has learned something about how to stop exploitation in the state of Florida. I'm Shannon Miller, and we're with the Miller Elder Law Firm.